Hello students, uh, today we will be doing the current affairs for uh, the 5th of March 2022. Now, uh, we have a lot of very important topics that we will be discussing today. The first and most important topic is the Kavach anti-collision uh, technology that has been unveiled by Ministry of Railways. After that, uh, Operation Ganga, it has been there in the news uh, for a very long time. Uh, most of these news items are related to Ukraine crisis, both of them. And then uh, National Disaster Response Fund is another important topic. Most of the details that you need related to National Disaster Response Fund has been put over here on the PDF itself. Uh, please follow it. It can be asked uh, as a part of your prelims. And then defense acquisition procedure, especially the defense acquisition procedure, which has been amended 2020, the latest one. Okay. And then this co-location scam. All of the topics are basically important, including the one about general consent, which has been withdrawn uh, by the state of Meghalaya for the CBI. So all the topics are important. Now, first topic, Kavach is nothing but it is India's indigenously developed technology. Actually, India had an option of going with the European technology earlier, but India wanted to develop its own indigenous technology, which comes at one-fourth of the price of European technology for anti-collision. Okay, it is India's indigenously developed technology that can prevent two trains from colliding. It was recently tested. Okay, now... So some of the features have been mentioned over here as well. The ones that have not been mentioned within the write-up have been mentioned over here. Uh, now uh, some of them are like anti -bra automatic braking, automatic whistling when approaching uh, level crossing gates, prevention of collisions between two locomotives like what we spoke, then SOS messages during emergency in case, okay, and then live monitoring of train movements through network monitoring system. All these are the additional uh, things that are there, apart from the ones that we have discussed within the article right now. Now, moving on, we will understand what Kavach is. It is India's own automatic production system, which has been in development since 2012 under the name Train Collision Avoidance System. This has just been renamed to Kavach, which is an Indian name. Now, it is a set of electronic devices and radio frequency identification devices installed within the locomotives. Now, locomotives in railways would be called rolling stock. So, these are nothing but RFID tags, RFID devices, which are installed within these locomotives. <laughs> and then in the signaling system, as well as within the tracks, that talk to each other using ultra high radio frequencies. What do they use? They use radio frequency. Only radio frequency. Radio frequency is it uh, high wavelength or high frequency? Okay. Now uh, understand that uh, radio uh, waves are very large wavelength, high large wavelength. Lambda and low frequency. Waves. Okay, so they use radio frequencies to control the brakes of trains and alert drivers all based on the logic that has been programmed into them. So they use RFID devices which are installed into different different components. And these devices actually communicate with each other using radio waves in order to alert uh, two trains which are either coming to each other or in case of emergency situations. One of its features is that by continuously refreshing the movement information of a train, it is able to send out triggers when a loco pilot jumps the signal called signal passed at danger. A grave offense in railway operations with respect to safety and key to accidents like collision. So whenever drivers by mistake, they pass that signal uh, without uh, because of negligence, uh, because of other reasons, whenever the signal is passed, uh, this particular uh, 
technology the coverage technology using the rfids it sends out uh, triggers or uh, it sends out warnings saying that this particular loco pilot has jumped signal or he has done what is called as signal pass that danger okay now the devices also continuously relay the signals ahead to the locomotive making it useful for loco pilots in low visibility especially during dense fog now in cases of dense fog and low visibility in case locomotives are approaching each other a is approaching b it is not possible to say uh it is not possible to see because of that particular dense fog and these devices these rfid devices they help in relaying the signals to the locomotive saying that okay there is one other thing that is approaching right now and because of that the locomotives will automatically slow down and they stop because of those devices communicating with each other coverage includes the key elements from already existing and tried and tested tested systems like the european train protection and warning system and the indigenous anti collision device the current form of coverage adheres to the highest level of safety and reliability standards called safety integrity level 4 what is it called safety integrity level 4 it adheres to sil 4 norms okay what is new about coverage india wants to position coverage as exportable system they want to export this as a cheaper al- alternative to the european train protection and warning system which is already existing but it is of high cost coverage uses ultra high frequency work is on to make it compatible with 4g long term evolution technology and make the product for global markets so con- currently coverage uses ultra high frequency waves however there are modification works in order to make it more applicable for other countries and for 4g lte okay uh, which is the body which is uh, developing the system it is the research designs and standards organization rdso which is headquartered in lucknow once rolled out it may be the world's cheapest automatic train production system with the cost of rollout pegged at 30 lakh to 50 lakh rupees only per kilometer which makes it extremely low cost okay now again please remember that india has a goal of zero accidents and because this is a sil4 or uh, sil4 uh, based uh, device the safety integrity level 4 based device it will help in preventing any accidents and achieve the zero accidents technology uh, so whenever there are two locomotives or trains uh, in the same track at a specific distance it will automatically stop these locomotives from approaching each other also whenever there are manual errors like what we spoke of uh, like the signal uh, crossing the signal that time it will uh, stop the locomotives now so some of the benefits of this is that because now the drivers don't need to be worried about collisions they can automatically go for faster movement of trains faster movement of trains this will ensure faster delivery of goods as well as on time uh, uh, trains thus services are improved uh, loss of lives is reduced okay now moving on operation ganga we spoke about uh, operation ganga operation ganga is nothing but india doing its evacuation projects from ukraine uh, india has more than 20000 people who had been stuck in ukraine and hence india is trying to uh, bring back these uh, 20000 people with the help of not only air india but also other private carriers and the indian air force over 3700 indians from ukraine returned on 17 special flights as a part of the center's operation ganga 11 special flights may bring back over 2200 indians later as a part of this operation ganga 14 civilian flights mounted by indian airlines 
brought back 3142 people and three C17 flights of the Indian Air Force brought back 630 Indians so both of them put together it is around 3700 that is the reason why it is there in the news earlier 9364 Indians had been evacuated according to a statement by Ministry of Civil Aviation using again C17 flights uh, and other private air aircrafts okay uh, now india has india had also provided 9.7 tons of relief material to ukraine so this operation ganga has been used for not only saving people but also providing humanitarian measures in ukraine now what is this operation ganga it is an ongoing operation by the government of india to provide humanitarian assistance amid the russian invasion of ukraine hmm. it requires uh, it involves transport assistance from neighboring countries of romania hungary poland moldova slovakia to reach india so it is not directly from ukraine itself so what students or people who are stranded over there it's believed that more than out of the total 20000 18000 of them are just students so these students have actually been given advisories by the indian embassy saying either by walk or somehow reach the neighboring countries and from the neighboring countries we will evacuate you uh, so neighboring countries of ukraine are these particular regions romania hungary poland moldova slovakia also four union ministers have been sent to these neighboring countries in order to evacuate the uh, people the indian air force and multiple private airlines air india indigo uh, air india express spicejet all of them have been providing logistical support This is not the first time that India is carrying out this relief uh, measure. Earlier, uh, we also carried out Bande Bharat mission, for example, during the COVID time, and then Operation Samudra Setu, which is the same Bande Bharat mission, but then it is a naval operation. While Bande Bharat mission was a airborne operation, okay, from different different places, and around sixty lakh Indians were brought back, okay. uh uh during operation samudra setu it brought back around 4000 indian citizens indian naval ships such as jalashwa airavat shardul magar all of them were used now uh, apart from this there was operation rahat and operation sankat mochan operation rahat was in the case of yemen where the houthi rebels attacked uh, the yemen government uh, plunging uh, yemen into civil war please uh, know all these uh, places which have been affected by militancy and civil war houthi rebels in yemen hezbollah in uh, lebanon hamas in palestine uh, okay under operation rahat india evacuated nearly 5600 people from yemen and then operation sankat mochan where the indian air force evacuated indian citizens and other foreign nationals from south sudan Sudan was actually one country earlier on and uh, South Sudan wanted to split away this resulted in a civil war and India carried out uh, operation sankat mochan in order to safeguard our citizens okay moving on next topic asian infrastructure investment bank asian infrastructure investment bank the reason why it has been there in news is because it is a chinese led uh, Uh, institution please remember that it's a chinese led institution not an american or a japanese led one asian development bank is a japanese one japan has a largest stake over here asian infrastructure investment bank has put all activities relating to russia and belarus on hold and under review in the wake of current conflict in ukraine the aiib referred to the current situation as the war in ukraine this is the closest to invasion that any chinese government affiliated institution has until now described the situation in the east european country this is because china has been on the side of russia china has not imposed any sanctions on russia and china has supported any vote uh, or actually china has abstained from any vote involving russia 
in the united nations let it be the un hrc un security council anywhere now what is the asian infrastructure investment bank it is a multilateral development bank with a mission to improve the social and economic outcomes in asia as well as beyond so this particular bank does not take up only infrastructural work in asia but also beyond asia please remember this uh, point very importantly there are more than 100 uh, members currently okay so there were 57 founding members and currently there are more than 100 members it is headquartered in beijing the bank started operation after the agreement for asian infrastructure and investment bank entered into force on 25th december after ratifications were received from 10 member states holding total number of 50% of the stock capital stock aim of the bank is to invest in sustainable infrastructure aiming to connect people services markets that over time will impact the lives of billions of people and build a better future okay please remember the voting structure within the asian infrastructure and investment bank china is the largest shareholder with 26% of the voting share followed by india so india is the second largest uh member in the asian infrastructure investment bank followed by russia germany okay and the regional members within asia itself they hold around 75% of the total voting power of the bank please remember these points very important okay some more points regarding uh, asian infrastructure investment bank is written over here uh their founding capital was 100 billion dollars now this members currently is uh, has to be updated it is more than 100 right now and renminbi the chinese official currency is the settlement currency for aiib okay it's not a surprise because china controls more than 20% of the voting uh, share no russia has been under sanctions we know that we saw the swift ban and we saw the sanctions which have been imposed by european union and by uh, the usa so what are the impacts of these sanctions there has been an exodus of foreign companies and investors leaving russia more isolated and economically restricted now russia cannot import or export items that it needs this is because a lot of countries have banned any trade with russia okay for several days long lines formed near atms around russia as people had rushed in order to withdraw cash both foreign currency as well as russian currency rubles is russian currency amid fears of breakdown in the electronic banking the value of ruble has also plummeted why because no one wants to take any rubles if there is no trade you know between russia and the other country then why will anyone want uh, rubles so its value has plummeted fallen the kremlin kremlin means russia the kremlin has also banned all russians from transferring foreign currency abroad and ordered the exporters to exchange 80% of their foreign currency proceeds for rubles there has also been the problem of inflation especially in electronics for which russia is dependent on imports many people in russia who work for foreign companies and who have to be paid by foreign companies have also been affected because russian banks have been put under swift sanctions also russia has it is the world's third largest oil supplier exporter second largest natural gas supplier third largest coal supplier so also the second largest wheat supplier so all these exports will get affected when the export of these items gets affected the supply of these items reduces when the supply reduces and the demand is still there then what will happen this will result in increasing prices of commodities so commodities have actually gone for a big spin so much so that crude oil barrel 
is costing more than $110. Currently, it's $112 as on yesterday. It's because of this geopolitical tension that is happening. Recently, a high-level committee, National Disaster Response Fund, this is the next topic, a high-level committee under Union Home Minister has approved additional central assistance under the National Disaster Response Fund to five states and one union territory, which were affected by floods and landslides during 2021. Now, what is this National Disaster Response Fund? National Disaster Response Fund is a, it's a funding which is there in order to meet the expenses for emergency response relief and rehabilitation in case of any disaster. It is the fund which is provided in order to deal with emergency response and relief and rehabilitation in case of any emergency disaster situation. This NDRF is actually a statutory fund and created under the Disaster Management Act of 2005. It is under the public account of India and doesn't get any interest. Even if you store as much money within this NDRF, it is not going to accumulate any interest. It has 0% interest, not varying interest. So the financing of this particular fund, it is done through the levy of a particular cess. Now, what is this cess called? This cess is called as the National Calamity Contingent Duty. This is the cess. This is used to fund the National Disaster Response Fund. Now, this is levied on sin goods such as Tobacco, uh, levied on tobacco and the proceeds from this particular cess are used to fill up the NDRF. Now, also even uh, budgetary support is provided for the NDRF. Okay, It is managed by the central government for meeting the expenses for emergency response, relief and rehabilitation like what we spoke of. It also supplements the State Disaster Response Fund. Now, what is the State Disaster Response Fund? Uh, it uh, supplements the State Disaster Response Fund in case of disaster of severe nature and adequate funds are not provided in the State Disaster Response Fund. Now, what is the State Disaster Response Fund? It is the primary fund available with the state governments while NDRF is under the central government State disaster response funds are under the state governments and they are deployed by the states as and when they want. They are the primary fund available with the state governments for responses to notified disasters to meet expenditure for providing immediate relief. Okay. However, the funding for the state disaster response fund comes from again the center itself. The center contributes 75% of the SDRF allocation for general category states and 90% in the case of special category states. Okay. Monitoring of the fund. While the Department of Agriculture and Cooperation is in charge for relief activities for calamities associated with drought, hailstorms, pest attacks, cold wave, it is the Ministry of Home Affairs which takes care of fund allocation for all the others including floods, earthquakes, landslides, anything. And hence currently it is the Ministry of Home Affairs which has allocated funds from NDRF in this particular news article. Uh, also because it is a part of the public account, uh, it is the Comptroller and Auditor General who audits the accounts of the NDRF. Also, please remember that what is the public account of India? The public account of India is, uh, you know, it's, it is a fund just managed by the government. The government does not own this fund. The government only manages this fund. All the money under... Uh, 
से ऑल द मनी रेज थ्रू प्रोविडेंट फंड पब्लिक प्रोविडेंट फंड किसान विकास पत्रा एक्सेट्रा 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 आर स्टोर्ड विथ इन दिस पब्लिक अकाउंट एंड द गवर्नमेंट मैनेजर्स इट इन ऑर्डर टू टेक मनी आउट ऑफ द पब्लिक अकाउंट ऑफ इंडिया वी डोंट नीड अ बिल टू बी पास बाई द पार्लियामेंट अ बिल नीड्स टू बी पास बाई द पार्लियामेंट only in the case of expenses from the consolidated fund of india in case of public uh, public account there is no bill that has to be passed by the uh, parliament however it is still under the uh, scrutiny of the parliament the parliament uh, can raise questions regarding the same now defense acquisition procedure 2020 now the reason why it is there in the news is because recently the government has taken up its uh, push for self reliance in the defense sector it has given in principle approval to many indigenous design projects such as the defense ministry has cleared nine such projects four under make one and five under make two categories of the defense acquisition procedure 2020 now uh what is this defense acquisition procedure we will read it in some time in the meanwhile these particular projects include the development of light tanks communication equipment etc etc okay now defense acquisition procedure this is very important there might be direct questions from this this particular policy actually superseded the defense procurement procedure of 2016 defense acquisition procedure has uh superseded uh, the earlier procedure of uh, 2016 now what are the features some of the important features are reservations for indigenous firms the policy reserves several procurement categories for indigenous firms only it defines an indian vendor as a company that is owned and controlled by resident indian citizens and the fdi in these particular companies has to be lesser than 49% fdi means foreign uh, backed holdings can be lesser than only 49% of the stake of that company it has a new category which stipulates indigenization of at least 50% of the overall contract value of a foreign purchase bought with the intention of subsequently building it in india with technology transfer at least 50% of the project has to be manufactured in india built using components manufactured in india manufactured even if there is uh, it ha- uh, 50% of the components have to be manufactured in india with a technology transfer there is also a greater indigenous content in general because uh in most acquisition categories not just in uh, global by global and manufacture in india category in most of the categories dap 2020 stipulates 10% higher indigenization as compared to a uh, defense procurement procedure 2016 and not just in this one particular category but in most of the categories there is more indigenous content we also have an import embargo list which means that these particular components should not be imported they have a list of around 101 items that the government has promulgated it has been specifically incorporated into the defense acquisition procedure so uh in that particular list whatever countries are named you can't import items from those countries nor if at all there are certain arms which are named those particular arms also cannot be Im- imported so there is an import embargo list also there is a component regarding offset liability the government has decided not to have an offset clause in the procurement of defense ac- equipment if the deal is done through intergovernment agreement government to government agreement or in case of a single vendor agreement in these three cases where in intergovernment agreement government to government agreement and ab initio single vendor agreement in these three cases we need not 
have an offset loss offset loss is nothing but whenever india buys you know uh, any outside uh, technology or outside uh, weapon a particular percentage of that spending that india has done has to be invested in india itself by the other country say india acquires rafale from france according to the offset clause some percentage of this rafale deal say 20% has to be invested back in india itself so the new defense acquisition procedure does away with this in case of three categories of projects general consent has been withdrawn by meghalaya okay we spoke about the cbi uh, some yesterday okay we spoke about the components of cbi uh, that it is not a statutory body what are the powers of the cbi director we spoke about the lokpal bill what changes it made uh, also the cbc so uh, one new change is that we also said that uh, cbi does not have suomoto powers uh it can take up suomoto cases only when directed by the central government in case consent has been given by the individual states states okay uh it has so much of powers only in the case of union territories not in states now meghalaya has withdrawn the consent to cbi to investigate cases in the state becoming the ninth state in the country to take this step the cbi is governed by the delhi special police establishment act like what we spoke it must mandatorily obtain the consent of the state government before beginning to investigate a crime in the state from now on why because this particular state has withdrawn the general consent hence from now on in order to uh investigate a crime in meghalaya the cbi has to every time approach the state government and get its permission uh, uh the section 6 of the Uh, delhi special police establishment act it says that nothing contained in section 5 shall be deemed to enable any member of the cbi basically the delhi special police establishment is nothing but cbi over here to exercise powers and jurisdiction in any area in a state without the consent of that state hence in order to investigate any cases in a state we need to have the consent of that state now the cbi's position is very different from the nia's position nia has jurisdiction in any part of the country as under the nia act of 2008 however the consent of the state government to cbi can either be case specific or general okay general consent is normally given to states to help cbi in seamless investigation of cases of corruption against the central government employees in the state this consent is by default in the absence of which cbi will have to apply to the state government in every case and before taking even small actions now uh if at all the general consent is withdrawn by the states then it becomes case specific for every case cbi has to apply for permission and get the permission and then only go for investigation over there hence that is the reason why we said cbi does not have so much of powers if the states withdraw general consent what are the states which have withdrawn the consent till now initially all states had given the cbi general consent however since 2015 several states have begun to take back the general consent before meghalaya maharashtra punjab rajasthan west bengal jharkhand chatisgarh kerala mizoram all of them had withdrawn back the consent it is to be noted that most of the states over here are actually ruled by anti bjp uh, parties or anti center parties except mizoram and meghalaya where partners of the central party are ruling okay it's a coalition government uh 
uh, other components of uh, cbi what is the cbi what are its powers and all have been discussed in yesterday's video please uh, watch that collocation scam at the national stock exchange okay it is to be remembered that in india we have the bombay stock exchange and the national stock exchange the bombay stock exchange is much older both of them are used for trading of shares stocks options uh futures forwards and so on okay now uh it is sebi which regulates these stock exchanges sebi was established as a statutory body under the sebi act of 1992 it regulates the uh, securities market secures the market from malpractice malpractices also educates people okay and it secures the investors interest takes care that no corporate governance uh, lapses happen many agencies are investigating this nsc collocation scam related to the manipulation of the nsc market national stock exchange market how how does this collocation happen collocation is nothing but uh, nsc will have its servers in some particular location say over here in this building a nsc servers are there now these servers are not only going to be used for nsc but rather some of the servers might be used for other functions also so this is when along with some servers other servers for other functions are also placed in the same location then it is known as a colocation colocation is typically associated with a facility where a third party can lease a rack server space along with other computer hardware colocation facility provides infrastructure such as power supply bandwidth cooling for setting up of servers and storage of data now what happened at this colocation facility of nsc there are allegations that some brokers who had leased the space at nsc colocation facility they were able to log on to nsc system systems faster with better hardware specifications while engaged in algorithmic trading which allowed them uh, an unfair advantage during the period between 2012 to 2014 now because these people who were working out of the same server space where the nsc servers were located they could have a lead time of even 1 second if you have a lead time of 1 second uh as compared to the others when it comes to stock market you can make tremendous amounts of gains so because they had their servers at the same region at the same place as nsc it is believed that they had some unfair advantage as compared to the others who were trading even a split second faster access is believed to result in huge gains for the trader earlier at that point of time between 2012 to 2014 nsc used to disseminate information through unicast which is a single direct request sent from one host to another host with only those hosts interacting over the route so uh, so these particular servers which had to interact with the nsc servers which were placed within the same location they had an advantage of some 1 second as compared to one host which is somewhere else and which is interacting with the nsc server so this time gap that the colocation hosts have was benefiting these stock traders now the sebi found that preferential access was given to stock brokers at nsc colocation fa uh, facility it found that a single stock broker could log on to multiple dissemination servers through multiple ips assigned to him it also found that brokers could have multiple logins to a single dissemination server through multiple ips assigned to it this gave at least 15 brokers preferential access so because of this preferential access it is believed that many brokers had an advantage as compared to the other traders and uh, this was being exploited this is the colocation uh, scam 